Peroni Brewery is a brewing company founded by Francisco Peroni and Vigevano Italy in 1846. The company was moved to Rome by Giovanni Peroni in 1864, six years prior to Rome becoming the Italian capital in 1870. Throughout the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the company became one of the most prominent brewing companies in the newly unified Italian nation, and by the 1990s, both the Peroni brand name and product line were distributed and known worldwide. The London-based brewing giant S.A.B. Miller bought the company in 2003, making it one of the few international brands in its portfolio. However, by 2016, Peroni was owned by Miller Brands UK as part of the S.A.B. Miller empire, and as part of that agreement, which was made with regulators before Anheuser-Busch InBev was allowed to acquire S.A.B. Miller fully, the company had to sell Peroni to Asahi Breweries, the Japanese brewery giant, on October. October 13th, 2016. Probably best known, this brewery, for its premium lager, Nasturo Azuro, which is 5.1% ABV, but we'll get into that later. And the 13th best-selling beer in the UK in 2010. That's right, today on the show, we're drinking Peroni. <laughs> I can't let this music slide. up to the Bluetooth. The weakest entry yet. Well, it seems like it tried to go over my phone internal speaker initially, and then it remembered it, it was on Bluetooth. Kicked into the Bluetooth? On the second beat. Kicked oh, into the Bluetooth. Boy. Thanks for that beautiful intro, Joe. Off the dome. Should we do another take? Nah. <laughs> well, we'll edit it together, and we'll put the music in so it sounds real uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know about that. I'm not in the mood to do anything today. Oh. You know? Cheers. Well, cheers. Hopefully you're in the mood to have a Peroni. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It tastes like a Peroni. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's refreshing. So, it's a good summer one. What what put what made you not in the mood to do anything today? <laughs> uh, diving right in. Hey, look. Some thoughts on this. Wow. Let me bounce Nick this with off some thoughts. You. you bounce it off me. I'll come back with, with some thoughts of my own. Um, I don't know. I didn't drink coffee today. It wasn't really a conscious decision going into the day, but then it got to be like 3 p.m. and I hadn't had any yet and decided mm. I wasn't going to do any. But I think that's what's leading to this kind of late day haze, if you will. Sure. The 2 p.m. feeling. That 2 p.m. feeling. Right. I got to have my five-hour energy. You should have five-hour energy <laughs> every single day. a gallon of that stuff every day. <laughs> I hate that they come in little bottles. I got to buy 10 of them in order to get a fix, in order to fill a pint glass. I know a guy. He so gets you... it re- straight out of the bulk tank uh... <laughs> before it's pasteurized. <laughs> Unpasteurized five-hour energy. It's, it's the illegal. only way to drink it. Yeah, it's illegal in most states. <laughs> yeah. The only way I'll drink it. First time I had a dose, <laughs> I was in the hospital in 45 minutes. <laughs> I ran there, though, actually. <laughs> And straight to the doctor. Uh, my heart hasn't beat right since. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm glad I'm here yeah. now doing this. This is fun. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. I think there's just, you know, we're coming off that long weekend, that long 4th of July weekend. Yeah. So work's kind of backed up. Sure. And probably a lot of people are experiencing that. I bet the you're backed kind up. of backed up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got it. Got you. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just all coming, crashing down, you know? Wow. So it's kind of getting back to it. Well, this will pick you right back up. Yeah. Peroni, cheers again. One more drink. we got to stop drinking at the same time. Ah, listeners are used to the dead air by now. What little there are left. Uh, is really good. So right on the, the bottle, if we jump right in, this is a green bottle beer. And we've had our reservations with this in the past. <laughs> you have nothing to say. You raised your eyebrows. <laughs> We've been doing this for 90 some odd episodes. Every time you raise your eyebrows, I know it's a cue to give you a moment to say something. And, and I appreciate that. I was, was going to do something with uh, oh, yes wow. reservations. Like the Anthony Bourdain show, No Reservations. At the end of the theme song, they would go, yeah. no reservations. Yep, RIP. RIP in peace. Yeah. And then- you said we've had some reservations about this, so I was trying to think, is it funny to say, yes, yes. reservations? I wouldn't have got it, and I'm not sure how many people would have, so I'm happy it it's held It's not off, worth, yeah, it, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> you left everybody and I realized that, so I, 
And then I backed off. I dug deeper. I dug my heels. Uh, uh, you like my therapist, Joe, over here. Hey, sometimes that... I just want to sit on your couch and drink tea and cry, huh? Don't get me talking. Don't... Not today, though. You're not going to drink any tea. So uh, herbal only. <laughs> herbal only. Uh, so the Peroni Green Bottle, uh, we've had reservations with that in the past. <laughs> And uh, this one, though, I think works a little better than the other ones we've had. This is really nice. Uh, and it's I think it's kind of normally a little bit skunky. Yeah, yeah. You know, like it, that's part of the flavor profile. Sure. So it, that doesn't take away from it too much, even if it was maybe a little bit tainted from the sunlight um, penetrating the bottle here. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is good, though. It's I, refreshing. It's very refreshing. And one thing I like is that I believe... I'm still trying to read all this. Yes, I don't think there's any English uh, on the bottle. And you bought this oh, here. Oh, I bet you love that. And I'm really into you that. Il gusto lib. unico secco e refrescante della birra premium italiana più bevuta al mondo of the world. That was the end, I think. Wow. That Duolingo's <laughs> really been paying off, Joe. I'm doing it in French, not Italian, motherfucker. <laughs> It's all uh, the same Latin root, you sorry sack of shit. Qualita superior, Peroni Nasturo Azzurro Italiana. I'm sorry I called you that. There wasn't any reason to do that. It's okay. You haven't had any caffeine today. That's a, yeah. Don't, even, don't even talk, talk to, to me. Until <laughs> I've had a gal and a five-hour energy. <laughs> don't get that unpasturated by our energy. <laughs> Pasteurized. God damn it. I can't even do a joke anymore. I can't. The, I the think stumbling. it's funny that you do. I mean, you're usually very quick with your things, but then a lot of times you'll like slightly miss say something. <laughs> and that's the solace that I get. Yeah. It, it's because I, I think it's funnier if it happens quickly. Right. In, and then if I if it's if I can't just pull the word because totally need, I, needed, I like, think you're right. It's right. about the timing of it more than the like perfect execution. Right. I, I needed if I had 200 more milliseconds, like, milliseconds. There it is. Hey, I could probably hey. pull the word pasteurized. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. They're all um, worth it. No, I'm done. <laughs> I'm reevaluating a lot of my choices. The five hour energy is only the beginning. <laughs> Wait, you're re- reevaluating your unpasteurized. No more pun. Hour? Yeah, no more unpasteurized five hour energy. <laughs> no more pun based humor. I think the former is probably a good idea. I gotta say, <laughs> the latter though, I think you could stay with. Been thinking about it for a while. <laughs> been considering it the past few years to stop drinking a gallon of it a day. My doctor is begging, pleading with me. <laughs> Calls I'm me on in the phone. <laughs> deep credit card debt as well. <laughs> that stuff's like a hundred dollars a gallon. But once, because you get it right from the tap, though, it's unpassed. No discounts. It's actually more expensive. Oh, no, because of the illegality. It's the premium, yeah. Yeah, It's the premium stuff. They're like the moonshine runners (laughs) back in the day. But it's just some guy I know down at the factory. (laughs) Down at the five hour energy factory where they got big vats. Yeah, I know him. (laughs) He just takes my old milk gallons and. Gets me just right out of the tap. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's just this bubbling pink liquid. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if it is pink. I think so. I guess it's hard to tell, right? Because it's in those. Covered bottles. They very clearly cover them. They on, don't want you to know. Do not look like. in this. I think <laughs> under those bottles, it's white too, so it's not a cl- even a clear bottle. Oh, so there's plastic wrap and uh, opaque. Yeah, uh, you will not see what you're. Just put it in. Just put it down and forget about it. And you're gonna feel. You're not gonna feel that two hour haze. Oh my god, that's uh, the thing. Though getting back to the whole caffeine thing, you know, I think I usually drink caffeine in the afternoon to avoid because it feels like I need a nap. Around two o'clock. Yeah. But what's wrong with taking a nap? Italians probably take naps, don't they? I know it's the Spanish primarily, but no, I, I, the Italians have a much more laid back culture than we do. Yeah. Like the, even the idea of like questioning whether it's okay to take a nap, I don't think many Italians would do. Yeah. I, I spent a little bit of time in Italy. I'm for sure not an Italian expert, but one thing I've noticed over and over is like how there's just always where people kind of milling about, and I know that happens okay. in any big city. But in a different way. It's mm-hmm. like in like in New York, it doesn't seem like, even in Seattle, it doesn't seem like downtown, there's people really milling about. If you're milling no, about- No, you're always you're on like, your way somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You got your dress gear on and you're like on the phone. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. And if you're milling about, it's like, oh, you know, it, this may be like problematic. Maybe right. it's somebody with- Cops are on drug the way. Drug addiction. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. 
or whatever, or it's a homeless person or whatever, right. like things right. that society frowns upon. Whereas I, in Italy, the perception I got was like it was like almost a. I don't even know the best way to describe it. It's like a video game when the NPCs just. I, walk I don't know the, the English word for it, but um. <laughs> but it's a risotto. <laughs> No, they, that's that they, is. It was Arzuro. I, I even got that wrong. Oh, you were trying to go I was for trying that. Trying to yeah. do it. The Italian they they call it Nes, <laughs> Nestro Azzurro. It's the act of middling about Brooklyn. You're straight from Brooklyn. Hey, motherfucker, Nestro, Nestro Azzurro. Azzurro. Okay. <laughs> well, but that it like kind of was startling. It would be like if you're hmm. in a movie, like sure. when, when people are walking down a sidewalk, or in a video game, if you walk down a sidewalk and you look at like the extras or the NPCs in the video game, there's people like milling about like mm-hmm. talking to each other just two people standing there or like someone reading a newspaper it just seems like you never ever see that like right in in the streets and yeah the, and if, when you do it, it is odd or it's yeah. like something's wrong here right or people like people if, are waiting for a bus maybe that's right. the only thing yeah yeah but that's on their way somewhere yeah yeah exactly or if like you and i didn't expect to see each other and we walked down the same street we might stop for like 10 seconds and go holy shit but mm-hmm. like that wasn't the reaction that i was seeing in these cities it was just like they were Standing there, just like you know, taking a smoke, just watching people, whatever. Mm-hmm. So that was super interesting. Italy, uh, Italy was great, and they drink Peronis. That's so they mill very, around very, very and they common. take naps. I don't know if they take naps. But my point is, I don't think it's a culture that frowns on naps. No, I, I got you. I think caffeine's big. I think one thing they yeah, do is that a lot of espresso. Coffee is very different. It's all espresso. Yeah, you literally walk up to a bar, you order the espresso, you rip the shot, you walk away. Which is kind of antithetical to what I was just saying, but that's how they treat caffeine. It's like, this is just a thing mm. I need. I'm going to rip it and I'm gone. I'm not like having See, a big coffee. That seems more efficient than my gallon of five hour energy a day. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I was ripping Again, a shot of espresso. I don't think anybody was, is uh, questioning whether or not you should continue to do your five <laughs> gallon. You need to get rid of I'm, that. I've, habit. I got a few appointments with a doctor next month and I'm going to see what he says. You shouldn't have or a she. few appointments with a doctor in a given month. <laughs> this all may be indicative. Hey, I care a lot about my health. Well, clearly you don't. Getting uh, my ducks in a row, so to speak. Sure. Uh, but Peroni, I think it it's not just like a... Um, I was talking to my uh, coworker, my buddy, uh, Matt. He's an Australian guy. And he was saying, no one Oi. drinks... Oi. No, mate, no one drinks Fosters. <laughs> he was saying, no one drinks Fosters in Australia. Huh. That's not how we get on the piss. That, that was kind of British. That is a fun... I like uh, the piss thing, though. Yeah, everything we gotta work piss more into our everything in their culture is, is built around piss. You get on the piss, you take a piss. Take a piss is not peeing. I think taking the piss is, man, he would know. I'd be able to. He'd be able to correct me. Get on the piss is ripping I'm one go out. Get drunk. I think no. Taking the piss is like shooting. I a got stream. too drunk. I think it's I got too drunk. And then you lay in a rod. You no. You take a slash. That that is going that's to a pee. piss. That's pee. Oh, okay. But everything, uh, piss is like a lifestyle. Did he just text you that? <laughs> no, all of this is, I was just We're out with him last streaming. weekend. Oh, okay, cool. Um, but anyway, he said Foster's, they don't drink in Australia. But Peroni, a big Italian export, kind of akin to the Foster's, they do. It's like okay. the common, it's the Bud Did you have a Peroni when you were in Maybe. Italia? Yeah, yeah. You could, it's open and talk stuff too. So like you could just oh, buy wow. a Peroni and just sit there at the table and have it. And it was always the cheapest thing, so. Yeah, it's good. As opposed to wine? Did you have a lot of wine no, in Italy well, as well? cheapest beer, I should say. Okay, You're, you're gotcha. right. Wine is way, way cheaper. Gotcha. They kind of do well, like the table fun. wine thing. Yeah, yeah. It was. It's a lot of fun. Could uh, you see yourself living in Italy? Because you were there on oh, your yeah. honeymoon, right? Of course that you could live in Italy. Yeah. Okay. I, I was there on my honeymoon, so it distorted right. my perception a bit. But, I mean, it's one of the most beautiful places on earth. Their culture seems cool. Um, they have like Milan, which is kind of like London or whatever. It's a big fin- financial. Milan? Yeah, Mulan. They have. Did you catch the new trailer that the premiered during the? Mulan? Yeah, premiered during the f- U.S. Finale. Women's National. Yeah. Can you name a more annoying group of people than the <laughs> U.S. Women? Can, <laughs> why is Chuck that a Woolery's thing? Chuck Woolery's tweet. Yeah, Chuck Woolery. Reference? All Republican stuff is like the U.S. Women's National Team suck. Because Fuck they them. forgot what it means to be American. Like <laughs> the. Women's national team is more American than any oh, of these. I thought you were going no. with it. I thought you were saying the women no. forgot what it meant. I legitimately, like, Megan Rapino said, like, I'm more American than, like, all my critics, basically. And she's right. She's right. Of she's course totally she's right. right. Yes. I'm so sick of, like, they're disrespecting our president and are stomping on our flag. Like, mm-hmm. in what way are they doing that? It's, it's just the, the whole thing now 
is like if something is remotely liberal, yeah. remotely, yeah, including it's un-American. just you're a woman, uh, <laughs> yeah. it, then it's un-American, and they know that they can flame up their base, mm-hmm. right? So they can go no. like these these women. I mean, they're out of control. It's not the only base that's flaming in their <laughs> life. <laughs> what I got? I don't know. Gonorrhea or oh, something? Oh, I see the Crabs. Republican. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they're well. We don't have to go all into this. I don't know how we got it, got into it. I well, both you were of doing us, the Chuck. Oh yeah, Mulan. I did the Chuck Woolery. Mulan. Mulan played the, way, the, the Mulan. Yeah, it looks pretty good actually. Because like, sure. it's tough to how do you make live action out of a thing that has a uh, dragon in it yep. that has a human voice? Yeah, and singing like large yeah. set piece singing things. Well, you can choreograph the singing and the set pieces and stuff. Right. I think the Lion King will try to pave the way for how to make the dragon like a live action well yeah but there's no humans in lion king but it's true it's all it's all it's well then maybe jungle book remember when bill murray right. was in jungle well, book Mowgli. right um, maybe it'll be kind of like that i don't know if they're gonna go there i think i i read a little bit about it i forget what they're gonna do with the dragon it's not going to be like a talking dragon but oh. then for the music no one's singing it's just going to be like the soundtrack is the instrumentals to the famous songs oh interesting so, like, so will they be like Doing other things, like a Wild montage, of music. probably is the impression that I, I got. So they won't be like dancing to the music. No, got it. They will just be. Wow. Yeah, it's like a training montage, and then they're playing the "Let's Get Down to Business." Well, thing. that's cool. That's kind of what the original movie did too. Yeah, right. Except they were singing, and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. That well, yeah. So I true. think it's a yeah. Like, what else could you do, really? And I think it's a good departure from the original. I think it is, too. I think it's disrespectful to <laughs> being an American, though, to watch that film. To have, yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw Rocket Man That's the other right. day. Yeah, how was it? Ble- blew me away. Hey. It was so fucking good. The Rocket Man blew me right away. Hey. It was so good. Nice. And they do a bunch of surreal stuff. So they basically do like all of his like biggest hits in okay. his discography. And it'll be part of the story. So they go through the story, and then he'll, like, just, which is a, a serious story of him. Mm-hmm. And then he'll just start, like, singing, and then it'll kind of become surreal okay. around him. Like, even the people who are involved at that moment, good yeah. or bad, if they're in a fight or whatever, everyone's singing and dancing and stuff. It's incredible. Like, it's really, really well done. Awesome. I'm glad that turned out. You absolutely should and watch it. And it's, what's it. his name? Taron Egerton. Taron Egerton. Egerton. Egerton, whatever. Yeah, the guy from uh, the Kingsman. Kingsman, yeah. Yep. And he's, he, he should... At the very least, be nominated for best. Okay, actor. like he just—he's incredible. The movie Rami Malek winning for Freddie Mercury probably precludes. If, if Rami Malek, uh, yes, if that movie doing got, that again, I guess maybe. But if that movie got as much hype as as it did, it would be a real shame if Rocket Man didn't. I I loved it. I, nice. I thought it was. It stuck with me for a few days. I'm still listening to Elton John like around the house and stuff. <laughs> nice. It's, it's yeah, he's got awesome. some hits, and I'm sure the rest of it's great as well. Yeah. Good. And Rob Stark's in it. Rob Stark's right. in it. Yep. He's great in it too. He does one he has one scene where he does a song where he sings and he's good. He has a good voice? Yeah. He's solid. I don't know. Maybe they're doing like AS, ASR or whatever stuff with it, but um but he he sounds great. Are there any drinking scenes in Rocket Man? And if so, what are they drinking? Since this is a beer podcast, Many. And that's all we talk <clears throat> about. Elton John was an alcoholic oh, no. most of his life, yeah, and a drug abuser. Uh, and had food addiction problems or whatever. Okay. And so, like, in his starting younger starting to like years, this guy. They're drinking all the time in the younger years. And his drink of choice, I believe, was gin and tonic. Ooh. Um, so he, there's a lot. Of, Elton drinks a lot of gin. <laughs> he drinks a lot of it. Um, and then, like, vodka orange juice, like, in the morning. Oh, and stuff. nice little screwdriver. Yeah. Elton, so Elton is drinking all of okay. the time. Okay. Yeah. Every day was Vegas for him. Yeah, well, he he was. I mean, the dude was the right. biggest rock star on the planet right. for a while. Uh during Freddie Mercury's time, I think. Yeah, that would right be right there. He Late came 70s, on the scene early before 80s was Elton John. Queen, I believe. But yeah, or maybe around the same time. I don't know. The last time I had a gin and tonic, I was at a rooftop like fireworks reviewing party for Fourth of July. They were doing a silent disco thing. There's like mm. a company that gets brought in to do these silent discos. Sure. In theory, I like the silent disco. Everyone has Bluetooth headphones. Yep. You're all listening to music, and you can just kind of dance. Yep. And it's like, you know, looks weird from the outside, but it's cool in the moment. There's one this, major problem with that. Maybe you'll go into it. Okay, yeah. This is, so this setup that they had, there were four different DJs going, and you could pick which one on your headphones mm. you wanted to listen to. That which, defeats the whole purpose I know, of it. I know. I don't get it. <laughs> so now we're not, Now we're all just, you might as well just play music. Yeah, now it's just headphones. you. Now it's just you. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand. It's a communal thing is what it's supposed to right. be. 
I don't get it. Well, that's and totally it, it led to a bad party. Like, no one was really into it. People were just sort of milling about. Of course. Unless, you like, you all yeah. are like, all right, everyone, play one. <laughs> like, that. that's dumb. I, I also think even if you're doing it right and you have one DJ, the problem is, of course, that, like, it discourages you from talking to one another, which is a big part of the communal experience. So you put the stuff I on. I hate talking. Oh, I see. You hate talking. So you like silent discs. Yes. So it's like it's almost like going to a movie or whatever, except right. there's not a movie on. It's we have to sit there and like listen, and you like yeah. Can't that's talk. the thing. It's almost like implying you're gonna be on drugs in like in yeah. these like trance states right. where you are just like sort of yeah moving to the vibe of the music. Right. It's oh. a weird thing, especially in that scenario. Like the thing opened at like seven p.m. doesn't get dark until ten p.m. Right. So people yeah, no one's gonna be like rocking out it's not a music festival no, no one budgeted like all right i'm gonna go on hard drugs for six hours <laughs> so i do this thing right and and yeah you, you if you're on a rooftop having beers you want to talk to people right, it right. Does, doesn't a music festival again you you planned it it doesn't make a lot of sense yeah um that, that's my and C-. also it's gimmicky it's gimmicky that totally because so, I mean, like, it was you like always want to pop the headphones on. yeah yeah exactly oh. it was like a group event that put it on so in theory this is someone's entire money maker is uh silent disco which if it's working good for them good but for it's them. totally gimmicky i agree fuck silent discos <laughs> <laughs> the official cold can you heard it here <laughs> sponsored by five hour energy <laughs> fuck silent disco yeah. i mean silent disco might be great if you're on enough five hour energy <laughs> so our sponsors might <laughs> take true take offense to our statement that's Maybe true sp- hey silent discos they're fucking great <laughs> go to one <laughs> We'll edit, yeah, whichever one, which yeah. is based on the sponsor we we'll have. We'll have our lawyer. He's emailing him right now, I guess. Okay. See. So uh, checking in on the flavor. Mm-hmm. How are you liking it still? It's getting I a little s- bit warmer, but. I, I think as it gets warmer, as is the problem with all the green bottle beers, that skunkiness comes out more. It's drawn out more as it gets warmer. But it's still not totally offensive for me. Like, uh, So what are the other ones we've had? Heineken, Xingtao. Any other one? Uh, Stella. Oh, yeah, Stella. Yeah. yeah. So Stella, I think, kind of works the whole way through. But Heineken and Xingtao... Stella can go pretty bad. I've yeah. had some bad Stellas out of a bottle. I would assume this one can, too. But it's sure. still relatively cold. And I'm drinking it quickly. It, I think it's just a yeah, great, Yeah, I think like, it is beer. still solid. Yeah. And another thing I wanted to bring up about this uh, mutual friend of ours and who was the best man at your wedding, uh-huh. Andrew, He, I feel like he was always known for drinking these. Yeah, he like, was Like, before a it would guy. have been normal. Everyone else was drinking Natty Light, and he would get a Peroni or something. Right. He was in. He was in college. Um, don't finish that, by the way. Leave a little sip. He was in Yo, college. Pure tea. I just, just something. He was. In don't co- tease me. Uh, Andrew just to put a bow on his thing. Was in college. Oh, we were all drinking. Would, would we were all drinking <laughs> Bush Light, <laughs> and uh, and he would he would go off and get like Peronis. I think his dad really liked Peronis. Gotcha. Like, he and his dad went to Italy together when nice. Andrew was in high school, and. Yeah, it reminds me of him too. That's it was a good call. You mentioned that when I walked in. Yeah, hey, cheers to you. Cheers Andrew Crumb. to Andrew. Crumb. Take care, care of yourself, for God's sakes. <laughs> okay, I was going to surprise I you totally. Finished it, but in my pocket the whole time. You ever see The Illusionist? <laughs> I've had a P or T, and now this is Trader Joe's. Oh my God. So, We're gonna have to do a whole episode breaking down Joey's obsession with Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. Uh. Let me get a picture. Every of time I this. see him, every time I see Joe, he talks about Trader Joe's. Um, it's the best. Do you want me? Just like every time I see you, you talk about a Star Is Born. I get to talk <laughs> about Trader Joe's. All right, I got you. Uh, it's, it, Trader Joe's. It is a transcendent performance out of Lady Gaga, <laughs> and Bradley Cooper was robbed of the Oscar. Rami Malek. He played. Burn in hell. Bradley played a great guitar. I will give. I'll give you that. It's I don't impressive know if that, that he learned how to how sing to play and well. play guitar for that fucking movie. Yeah, the dude, if the dude like figured out how to write music or paid someone to do it for him, he could just be a rock guy now. Like yeah. that could be what he wants to do. If if right, if that's what he wants to do. Right. Um. Anyway, Trader Joe's sells a PB and J bar. So this is kind of like a granola bar, but it's okay. It's not really. It's kind of more of like a dessert. So this is. Gotcha. Peanut butter and jelly in a bag, but in it's like a <laughs> granola bar cookie-ish okay. kind of texture. Um, I mean, I like the sound and feel. If almost, it feels like a Nutri-Grain bar. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's a Nutri-Grain bar. That's, that's a, a great way to put it. It feels like it. It looks like it, except it's 
the the crust is like almost graham crackery peanut butter, hmm. and then the middle is just jelly. It's just okay. jelly. So let's uh let's dig in. Okay. Uh, you just gonna bite it? I just bit it. Okay. With this beer? Yeah, I, think I, so. I guess you didn't know what beer we were gonna do, so it wasn't like a reason. No, to I think with this it. one, I actually think it might work. So, my assessment is that the peanut butter kind of overwhelms. Peanut butter is the star of the show here. Yep. And the jelly is secondary. Well, and the, I mean, you're right. Just the outside is the peanut butter flavor thing. It's also a little bit chalky. Like, it's pretty dry. Mm-hmm. Like a uh, neutral grain bar. Yeah, similar to that. And I think having a beer with it honestly makes it better, which is insane. But it moisturizes that. Uh, the chalkiness. The, yeah, the exterior. I think it's fine. I think This might be half parable. I mean, you might have to take the headphones off, and I might just have to talk to the listeners here the way you're going to take offense to this, but it goes really well with a coffee in the morning. The coffee like, does the same thing that I the beer does. I bet it does, yeah. yeah. You Dunkin'? You a Dunker? I mean, certain things I dunk in coffee on a bad. What would you dump in a coffee? Dunk not, in a coffee. Not this, because I think the Graham stuff would just kind of, it wouldn't work. It would fall apart a little bit. Probably. Um, but the coffee cleanses it well. I dunk Biscoff cookies from Delta. Sure. And I don't. The ultimate, yeah. Don't they call them like Europe's favorite dunking yeah, cookie? Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> it is great because the cookie itself is cardboard, and then you dunk it, and it's particle board. I don't mind the cookies, honestly. You dunk it, and it, it really is wonderful. Yeah, it brings it to the next level. I have dunked Oreos in coffee before, and that's actually very nice, depending on what the Oreo flavor is. Even the the filling works. Yeah, yeah, because it kind of softens it up a little bit, which sure. is nice. you just have to be very like just one dunk, and you're out. Wow, one dunk, and you're done. And then in, so you get a little bit of the crunch from the no, cookie as well. Do you hesitate still. while the dunk is being uh-uh. under? One dunk. In, out. It's like you're a kind uh, torturer. It's just quick dunks into the water. Oh, yeah. None of the holding it down for multiple seconds. I don't think you'd be a torturer for very long if you were too kind. <laughs> you'd be pretty bad at your job. Hey, well, we'll get into philosophies behind torture and its effectiveness, <laughs> but uh, the US I'm un-American. Torture. I'm, yeah, uh, you might as well call me the women's national team for <laughs> talking bad about torture. Uh, my favorite dunking uh, treat is Twix bar. Okay, Dun- into coffee. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see why that would be great. So it, caramel, the, the chocolate kind of melts around that oh, cookie, yeah. and the caramel melts a little bit too, and you eat that, and it's it's really, Wonderful. really, really, really good. Nice. Um, the, I years ago I started doing this because we had like. <laughs> We didn't have a lot of great snack options in the office a few years ago. So you just had this vending machine with, like, stuff in it. Mm-hmm. And I would get, like, healthy stuff or, or I would get trail mix or something. And then once in a while I'd be like, I want a candy bar. and get Snickers or whatever. And I got a Twix and I had a coffee. I was like, well, this would work. And I did it. <clears throat> Never looked Game back. changer, yeah. Such that a great Because cookie in there is probably similar to Biscoff. In yeah, exactly. Ways. Except nice. then everything melts around. You should try it sometime. That's good, too, because I think one reason I don't like Twix is because I don't like hard caramel or, like, Mm-hmm. Not sort of like runny caramel. I, I love runny caramel, but not the sort of stuff you have to gnaw on. So hate, softening it up a little bit would be nice. I completely agree with you. I hate those like like Halloween candies that are square with the clear wrapping. It's just a cube. Okay. And it's just caramel. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, it's Rock just, hard caramel. Yeah, and it just Here, break sticks. your teeth off on this, kiddo. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Uh, yeah, I agree. Anyway, Twix is great. Uh, the women's awesome. national team is... <laughs> They're great. We love Did them. Did you watch the final? Yes, and it was fucking awesome. It was they, fun. They pretty much kicked ass. I'm not sure the Dutch got Wisconsin a... alumnus. Oh, hell yeah. Rose. Rose Lavelle. She was great. Um, I'm not sure the Though Dutch she's got from a Ohio. shot off. Well, it's okay. She's like uh, a huge badger. Per- I looked her up on <laughs> no, Twitter. I know. I mean, she's got all oh, yeah, badger she, stuff everywhere. She like made the women's soccer team at Wisconsin relevant, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? Because they... I forget what it was, but it was because it was like four years after we graduated or something like that um, is when they were like good and when she was on the team. And nice. then after that, the men's team had a couple good years as well. So, yeah, it's awesome that That's she great. was there. And now Her she's... goal was a fucking missile. Oh, yeah. Rocket Man. And just like a Talk cool. Talk about Rocket Man. Rocket yeah, Woman. Solo performance. Yeah, it that. was. It was. She she like kind of looked to pass, but just realized she had a shot yep. and it was awesome. And I don't know that much about soccer and it was still fun to watch. I know as much as like FIFA has taught me mm. playing FIFA, which is very little. Uh, but yeah, it was cool. Nice. Should we take a bullet train home? Hey, let's do it, Joe. I can't wait to go home with you. Okay, beer advocate score two point seven nine out of five, or poor. And wow. I say this is poor me another. 
pour me another indeed. 5.1% alcohol, as was spoiled in the intro. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is the European Pale Lager, available year-round. What I would call that is a lead. It was a (laughs) lead-in that the intro did. No. You're following up with a tag here. I mean, it's not quite a tag. (laughs) Tag would be a little pithy comment. Just broadcast pro now. Uh, He's been producing NBC Nightline for 30 years. (laughs) Uh, now he's on Fox and Friends. And our latest story, yeah, exactly. Our latest story <laughs> is how the U.S. women's national team is destroying the fabric of America. Uh, their antics afterward where they were celebrating. Can you believe they celebrated? It was unbelievable. I cannot. That's the most un-American thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Frankly, it was disgusting. <laughs> uh, yeah, imagine that. <laughs> Sitting at home just getting yourself worked up watching them. <laughs> Be happy yeah. and celebrate. After you, and America, use the stage. Won, America won the World Cup, you're pissed. I'm pissed off now. The I'm men so fucking revved up. These aren't men at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, so, Peter Evans says, "Bad." Does anybody? Did any Italiano leave a review? No, but uh, Kaolan Boyo says, "Pure muck." <laughs> Nothing but a fashion statement like Grey Goose. The price is unjustified. What? Shite. The price? Pure fizzy shite. Makes you fart like... Okay, I didn't read this that time. <laughs> Makes Keep you going. fart like fuck next morning. I'd recommend buying six 500 milliliter bottles of Bavaria from Tesco for six quid. Smells like cannabis, which is its only <laughs> positive. <laughs> well, I hate farting like fuck the next morning, but <laughs> most beer kind of does that to you. Uh... Italian Pilsner is it Do apparently... you think it smells like weed? I, would, I think that's more than most beers, but yeah, I guess you're the, right. From the green bottle, that the level of it changes things a little bit. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's pure piss. Just pay six quid for something. <laughs> pure else. shite. Pure shite. Fizzy shite. <laughs> Makes you fart like fuck. <laughs> uh, I if pure piss. Hey, I'd like to get on the piss with one of these. And there we go. I'd like to be pure pissed. Uh, there is apparently a Czech Pilsner, which is like a counterpart to an Italian Pilsner. I don't know why they're similar. They're both a little drier than a normal Pilsner um, and uh, kind of crisp, a little bit of floral undertones, I think, in mm. both of these. So if you look at like a beer family tree or whatever. Beer tier system? Yeah. Well, not the <laughs> patented beer tier system. The family tree. Um, y- you see that. Uh, okay. Let's get to the rankings. Uh, I never know what you want me to do. Do you want me? <laughs> do you want me to start? Do you want me to come in? You second? can start. I like the. I have liked the countdown, but I think for this one, it's Ooh. not really as. Countdown's I mean, we could fun. still do it. I think I like the idea of honing in on a tier and then doing the countdown. Sure. So, uh, uh, we got wild card between yeah, twenty four at... and uh, thirty eight, hmm. or mild card. I mean, to be completely honest with you, I think I have it in my old card. I like all of these beers in 24 range are better. Yeah, it's true. Rain and there's air. some ones that are more comparable to this. Coors, Blatt's, Corona Extra, Hams. Yep. Boston like a lot Lager. of widely available ones in here. Yeah. Ugly Pug and Crikey IPA, I like all better. So for okay. me, it's more mild card. Um, I'm good with that. Okay. Okay, so we're in the mild card. That's 39. I'll read the mild cards out from 39 down. Please. So this is from tip to taint. Uh, 39. <laughs> do, you not, do you not want your fingers touching the bar? What's up? Do you not want your fingers touching the PB&J bar? You have to hold on with the wrappers. What's the deal with that? There's people that, <laughs> that are at my work who will hold on to a sandwich wrapper. I sure. have to listen to them hold that wrapper for 15 sure. minutes while they eat the sandwich because they can't just hold the sandwich in their fucking hands. Is it that you don't want your hands to get sandwich stuff on it, or is it that you don't want your dirty hands to touch the sandwich? I think it's more the second one, but can sometimes be the first one. Typically, you'd have a napkin, so that wouldn't be that big of a concern. Right. I think, it, I mean, all's were, they yell at us all day. Wash your fucking hands. Who's you're going to die. <laughs> There's signs up everywhere that you're going to, you're all going to get disease and die you if do you don't wash you your hands. If you t- don't touch your face with your hands, you can touch anything. And I know. You're not going to die. You're going to build up a better immunity if Probably. you do. I, you got to lick piss off the sidewalks. <laughs> well, I'm not talking that Australian piss. 
you want to get into that story, maybe we can save it for the I next don't know episode. if I want to tell that story, but yeah. But yeah, you... I, if I also think there's again there's a level of consideration if there's a if your coworkers are around you and you got a goddamn and you're you're so you're mad you're at it because of the your... sound of the rapper. Yes, I have to listen to that. This entire it, he's just oh my god. I'm trying to do my job. It's silent. And it's hey, just... if you want to hear uh, bad coworker behavior, come work at this coworking space someday. <laughs> there is a guy People can who sits there with he has headphones on typically. And he is very liable to just be sitting there at his laptop and then go, oh, come on, man. Fuck you. Like, he's just, he's emailing or he's on a call and he'll just shout that as if no one around him can hear him. He's not working with anyone else around him. He has his headphones in. That's an insane thing to do. Yes. And he'll also just laugh out of nowhere. I that (laughs) Like that. That's that's crazy. The guy, oh my god! There are people in shared corgi spaces that will laugh, and that sucks because someone will indulge them. Someone will go, <laughs> "Hey, what's, what's going on?" And then yeah, the guy will lean over. What are you laughing at? And then now we have to just take the bar out of the <laughs> fucking wrapper and eat it. There's three bites in the bar. All right, let me read uh, thirty nine to 47 that is the mild card so 39 downward is you went to baba black lager montucky cold snack who garden blue moon coors blatz corona extra hams sierra nevada torpedo extra ipa i got a spot i got a spot i got a spot i kind of formed one as i was talking i got a spot ready three, three two, one two one, one 46 42. Oh, mommy. Oh. So ahead of Blue Moon you had it? I had it just ahead of Blue Moon, just after Who Garden, and you had it just after Corona, just ahead of Hams. If I look at the ones above where you have it, Corona, Blatz, Coors, I do like all those quite a bit, and I go to them more than I go to Peroni. That's what I was thinking. I almost never have Peroni. I was more so comparing it to, like, Montucky Colesneck I like a lot better. I like Who Garden better. Um I actually probably like Blue Moon better, so I didn't even. I probably really had it at forty three. But you, I'm with you. I think it's forty six. I think that's a good one. It's a bit better Below than Hams. Ham, above Hams. Yeah, yeah. I, I would take this over okay. Hams. But Corona with the lime. Let's put it there then. I'm, I'm a yeah. sucker for a good like Mexican style lager. So yeah. I'm just a sucker for a hot track and a Mexican lager with a lime. Yeah, I thought you were gonna play the music as you said. I'm a sucker for a hot track. <laughs> I was queuing it up. I can't find it. Yeah, is the Bluetooth going to work this Bluetooth time? Bluetooth here. Now it's going to be too loud. Uh-uh. Oh, okay. That's a nice That's a No, nice don't touch out. it. I'm touching it. Oh, you can do it with the volume on your phone. It's all manual. Wow. Look at this these days. Thanks for joining uh, the podcast. It's now all manual here. You can be <laughs> assured of that. And we'll talk to you guys. Drink five-hour energy next week. <laughs>